Hello, this is Jeff, and welcome to Lecture 3 of Aligning Assessment with Course Objectives in the University Teaching Program. Assessment is an enormous topic, and so this video is just going to be a very brief introduction to a few key ideas with a focus on formative and summative assessment. The primary idea in this lecture is formative and summative assessment. Formative assessment is primarily intended to provide feedback, both to the students to guide their learning and to the instructor to guide their teaching. In contrast, summative assessment is principally about giving marks. Formative assessment usually happens all through the course, whereas summative is often at the end of the course. And formative assessment tends to be low stakes, by which I mean low weight marking, whereas summative assessment is often high stakes. One thing to notice about these descriptions is all the weasel words, primarily, usually, often. There's a fuzzy boundary between formative and summative. In fact, as I'm going to argue in a moment, it's probably better to think of it as a spectrum rather than as two distinct categories. In reading about formative and summative assessment, it's very easy to come away with the impression formative good, summative bad, and that's certainly an oversimplification. There are certainly some courses which kind of need summative assessment, although I'll point out that's primarily because we're in a system which requires that we give marks. Nevertheless, it is true that very few courses are improved by having more summative assessment, whereas almost any course will be improved by having more formative assessment. The reason for this is quite simple. Formative assessment is about feedback, and when well designed, it will improve student learning. Assuming that the primary purpose of your course is that students will learn, that means formative assessment is a good thing. Another reason to want to reduce summative assessment is its high-stakes nature. High-stakes evaluation tends to make it much more likely that students will cheat, simply because the motivation and reward for doing so is higher. As I said earlier, I think it's more useful to think of formative and summative as a spectrum. Part of the reason is that you can then think of a summative evaluation, and instead of thinking about how to replace it with a formative evaluation, you can think about how to modify it to make it more formative. So here's a scale in International Standard Formative Summative Units. Just kidding, obviously there's no such thing. About the most summative evaluation possible is a final exam. It provides no feedback and is all about marks. Midterms are a little bit formative because students get them back and in principle can get feedback from them, but in practice students rarely look at anything other than the mark on their midterm, and so it's very poor in terms of its formative value. Similarly, weekly quizzes are a little more formative because of the frequency of potential feedback, but the actual feedback is likely not very good. However, as soon as you give multiple tries on quizzes, which is hard to do in class but very easy to do online, it now has significant formative value. About the most formative possible would be to have a weekly quiz where they learn what their mark would be, but the only mark recorded is a participation mark. Similarly, a final term paper, where students are simply expected to write it and turn it in at the end of the course, is very summative. But if they have multiple opportunities for feedback with early drafts or feedback on outlines, then that becomes much more formative. Giving a single seminar will be very summative, but if students give several seminars, seminars with feedback in between, that's much more formative. Finally, I do something that I call mastery tasks, where students visit me one-on-one -on -one and are given a task. They complete it and I mark it in front of them, and if it's right, it's marked as done. If it's wrong, they try again, and again, for as many times as it takes to get it right. And the mark doesn't depend on how many tries it took. That's completely formative. To finish this lecture, I'm going to address the elephant in the room when it comes to moving online. I'm going to do it by contrasting two courses. Course A uses seminars. Students hand in reflections on the readings, they get feedback on those reflections and opportunities to resubmit. 
Then in class, they role-play debates between foundational theorists. They get feedback on those and an opportunity to improve in future role-playing debates. This is substantially formative, and it has a big live one-on-one -on -one component in the assessment, which is essentially cheat-proof. Other than some concerns over students' internet speed and perhaps the discussions in class taking too long and needing to move some of it out to asynchronous discussion, this course is probably good to go in switching to online. It probably won't need very large changes to the assessment methods. Now course B. It has a very simple evaluation plan, two midterms and a final. And in moving this online, this would be an unmitigated disaster. The primary purpose of exams is their security, that you know the answer you're reading is the student's answer. Online, that simply isn't true. And while there are ways to make online exams more secure, they will never be as secure as live exams. Now, the evaluation scheme in course A will only work in certain courses, so I'm certainly not saying that course B needs to turn into course A, but the instructor for course B had better think of ways to reduce the reliance on exams. There are many possibilities, but they will probably all involve a shift towards frequent formative assessments, and if possible, they may involve an increased use of one-on-one -on -one assessment.